My name is Becca. I am a master artist with Bioionic. I have been with them just shy of 10 years. Today we're going to talk about curls, we're going to talk about updos, we're going to talk about formal styling. If you see all the heart emojis going by and you just joined us, that is just telling me if you've used our tools if you're new to us. One heart if you've used them, two hearts if you're new. I'm so excited to share all of my bio love with you guys. If you have any questions, pop it down in the comments. I will try to keep up with the feed. Um, if I can't quite get it, repeat it, or I'll come back afterwards and scroll through the comments and comment for you guys. All right, so we're going to be talking about formal styling, romantic styling. Give me a hands up if you guys like to do uh, up styling. Give me a this emoji if you're a little scared. I want to see who we're talking to. Um, formal styling is going to be huge, 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 huge. Bioionic, yes, we're with Bioionic. Um, it's going to be huge. So right now in the world that we live in, we have a lot of weddings that are being postponed and being pushed out further, or we're doing small reception, small ceremonies here and there, then we're gonna move on next year and do the big, the big bang, the big reception. So next year, we are going to be busy, 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 busy. If you love to do formal styling, awesome. If it scares you, awesome. I'm here to show you tips and tricks to get you through these formal styles. We're gonna start with some down do's. We're gonna start with this awesome wave technique here. The first tool, I see some people that love doing updos and some people that are a little scared, and that's okay. If you're a little scared, give me the, the absolutely no emoji. We're gonna work you through this. <laughs> we're gonna get you through this fear. So we're gonna start with some down styling. Here, let me get my mannequin all set up. I'm gonna show you how to do this wave here. Waves are not going anywhere. They are so romantic, they're so soft. You can explode this up nice and big, or you can make it more relaxed, more of that beachy. It depends on your bride, it depends on the actual event that they're going to. This is one of my favorite looks. To complete this look, I'm going to be using my Style Winder. This tool definitely needs to go in your updo kit, 100%. There, this is the smallest size. It's a quarter of an inch, excuse me, three quarters of an inch. Um, three quarter of an inch style winder. So the best thing about this um, is the clamp itself is really, really narrow and thin, so it doesn't leave crease marks. And the whole iron moves with a twist of two fingers. So when you're using this, you can ideally whiz through these curls. I wanna show you how to use it before I go into that wave pattern here. So the name of the style winder is game is clamp, wrap, and roll, okay? Clamp, wrap, and roll. So you're gonna clamp it, you're gonna wrap those ends just to get them out of your way, and you're gonna roll with your two fingers right here all the way through. When you're completely through this, give myself some more room, the tension will release, okay? Those guys out of the way. Tension will release and that curl should slide right off and you are completely finished with that curl. Can you imagine how much less time this is gonna take you to whiz through just a quick curl set? Now, this is a really tight curl because it's a really small iron. So this iron ranges in sizes. The biggest size that we have is, um, we'll have a three quarter of an inch, we have an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half in this. So this is just my small guy, so it's gonna be really small. And yeah, it's really loose. It gives a really nice loose look. I actually use it on my hair today. I use the size inch on that. So quick, easy, you don't have to hold it, you don't have to wait, clamp, wrap, and roll. So we have our traditional curls here, but I wanna show you this wave technique here. So I have a question. When you are taking large sections, which I'm going to do, it's gonna be a bigger section, should we have our iron temperature set up or set down? Should it be higher or lower? Go ahead and type that out in the comments, I'll answer in a second. The question is, if you take larger sections, should your temperature on your iron be higher or lower? Okay, so we're gonna take a large section here. Get the rest of this hair clipped up out of the way. Now I am gonna split this into two. Get this guy out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and break it down. This might be a little big for me as well, so I'm gonna actually break this into thirds. Now you can absolutely do this technique with a section that big, and I'll show you why in just a second. So my question was, if you're taking larger sections, should your temperature be higher or lower? It want, you want it to be lower. The reason being is we don't, we're not like, we're not searing anything. We don't wanna to be too hot. We don't wanna blast the outside. We want everything to cook nice and even. I do talk about food a lot. I have a lot of food references. So if you're hungry, grab a snack. 
Okay, so the bigger the section, the lower the temperature you wanna be. It's kind of a trick question. You would think it'd be opposite, but we want everything to work evenly throughout. So for our wave, this little doodad down here, we're gonna keep that elevation nice and low. Now my low elevation is here. If your low elevation is here, that's great. If your low elevation is here, that's perfect. We just wanna make sure that we're maintaining the same elevation throughout the entire um, set that you're doing. So you're gonna take your strand and you're gonna twist it counterclockwise. That's to the left, one full revolution. So for my lefty friends out there, as you know, everything is backwards, so you are going to twist it to the right. Everyone else, twist it to the left, okay? So twist it one time to the left. You don't have to go all the way down the strand. We're gonna make this easy for us. We're gonna let our body do the work, okay? So twist it, and we're gonna pinch with those fingers, okay? Take your iron. Now this is the three-quarter inch. You can do this with an inch as well. You can also do it with the gold um, wand as well. So you're gonna place that iron underneath, and you're gonna wrap around. You guys see what happens? Each time you wrap, that automatically twists. So wrap it, it'll automatically twist. I'm gonna take my free fingers back here, and I'm just gonna feel. When this is warm on the outside, that means it's hot in the middle, so we can move on. And keep wrapping. Don't worry about those ends. This is more of an organic look. If you need to go um, back after you're finished and polish up those ends, we can, but I don't want anybody to burn their fingers. So then we're gonna slide this out. Now I'm gonna take you back to hair school. You want this to cool completely. Your hair is going to set where it cools. It's like jello. You heat it up, told you, I talk about food a lot. You heat jello up and it's liquid and it sloshes around. You put it in your container and then you put it into the fridge. When that cools down, you are setting your jello. We're setting our hair, okay? So when you take that off the iron, I want you guys to make sure it's cooling right where it lives. So what I mean by that is on the iron, this is exactly how it looked. I want it to cool exactly here. Now, if you wanted something to be a little bit more loose, if you wanted your end game to be looser, I would drop this down and let this cool hanging down to create more longevity there. Okay, so we're gonna let that cool completely. I'm gonna show you one more time and then I'll show you one uh, how to break it down once it is cool. So you'll take your section keeping that elevation nice and low. Remember where your elevation lives. If this is where your elevation lives in your low, that's where you want it to be. You want these waves to live together and you'll see in just a second. So we are twisting to the left, okay? We only need to do one time. You're gonna take your pinchers and hold on to that strand right there, okay? Using my style winder, placing underneath that strand and wrapping it around. Each time I wrap, you automatically twist, okay? Taking my fingers here that are free, not doing anything, I'm just gonna touch the back of that. When it's warm on the outside, that means it's hot in the middle. Now you wanna hold your iron um, either horizontally or you wanna start tipping it down. You don't wanna hold it up here. We don't wanna make upside down curls. So we're gonna slide this off and we're gonna let this cool right where it lives, okay? So when I do this behind the chair for any sort of formal styling, whether it be a bride, prom, just a glitzy night out, I will do the entire head, let it completely cool, and then come back and break it down. Okay, so to break this bad boy down, we're going to drop out our already cooled section. Okay. So we've twisted it each time we wrapped around. So now we want to untwist it. You're just going to grab those bottoms, and you're going to... Untwist, so I just grab and kind of untwist and give it some pull. You see that? This is the importance of making sure that this is completely cool before you start manipulating it. So you're gonna take your fingers and you're gonna rouge underneath those endulums, however big or small you want those to be, and start to work that out. You can leave it just how it is. You can work through. You can add some texture spray. My favorite things to work with when I'm doing updos is gonna be going up Weed Dad's going up and the Revive and Shine. So if you need a little bit extra, let's say your hair um, texture fabric is a little bit on the skinnier side, we're just gonna go underneath and spray this up. So taking that up underneath, give it a little bit of grit and then start to rouge it out. Do you like this? Give me some thumbs up if we're liking this. Are you guys still here with me? This is something that's very easy to do 
uh, behind the chair, but super impactful and super gorgeous. It makes a really great statement when you're doing formal romantic styling. Okay, so that elevation is nice and low. We're gonna twist counterclockwise and we're gonna pinch those fingers, okay? That iron goes underneath and we're gonna wrap it around. Each time you wrap it around, your body automatically twists it. You guys, isn't this so easy? It's beautiful and it's really, really easy to, to complete. And we're gonna slide that off once you're warm. Now, if you want this to be more loose and romantic, I'm gonna drop this down and let this cool lowered. So the longer the hair is while it's, while it's cooling, the more longevity you're gonna get. Another reason why I like to keep those ends out as well. So we've let this guy cool, we're gonna drop it down. Looks like this guy fell out, that's okay. Okay, so we've twisted those. Those are both of our coils that are cool. We're gonna take those ends. Let's see if I can show you here. And untwist, okay? Pull it down and start to give it, untwist it and start to give it some life. I like to expand it out, so I'll even take and I'll rock it out. All the way through, give it some movement, give it some air. Then take your fingers and rouge it out. Now you can make these so they all live together or you can make more of organic look and actually take your um, brush or comb and comb through it as well. Looks like you are twisting clockwise. You know what, it might be backwards because I'm on my front facing camera. Good, good catch. We wanna to twist to the left. This is my right hand, this is my left hand, so we're twisting to the left but it probably looks like I'm twisting to the right. I didn't even think about that. Good catch, Kathy. Definitely twist to the left. The reason being is if you are right-handed, you're holding your iron in your right hand. Move her out of the way for a second. Holding your iron in right hand, each time you wrap around, your wrist will automatically twist it to that left side. If you are left-handed holding that iron in your left hand, each time you twist, that will automatically go to the right side. I'm glad you caught that. So we are twisting to the left. We got that good old uh, reverse mirror image on the camera for that forward facing camera. I'll show you guys one more time and then I wanna move on to another beautiful look um, using our three in one. If you guys haven't seen this yet, you're, your mind is about to be blown. Okay, so as Kathy said, it looks like I'm twisting the wrong way. So remember that we're mirrored, not to make things any more confusing while you're trying to learn. So I'm taking my section. Now remember, for those of you that missed it, if you're taking larger sections, you want to lower that heat down. We don't wanna overcook that outside before we can get to the inside. So the bigger the section, the lower the heat. So I'm using my style winder to create this look. That elevation is nice and low. Remember, we wanna keep it the same. If you want more of a variation of those waves, move that elevation up and down, okay? So nice and low, we're twisting counterclockwise to the left and we're pinching with those fingers. That iron goes underneath that strand and we're wrapping around. Each time you twist, automatically twists as well. So you don't need to twist down that entire strand. I have been asked before if you need to change directions of your twist and the answer is no. So unlike a regular curl where your pad, your the, um, the eye travels up and down on those curls, your eye is traveling here and so we don't need to move. We don't need to create space. We actually want it to live together and if you do switch directions, you're gonna have to switch hands as well um, because it's just automatically gonna twist back, if that makes sense. What size style winder? This is the um, three quarter inch style winder. You can also do it with the one inch style winder. I would say an inch and a quarter may work, but it might be a little bit too big of a size. So I like to do this with my three quarter inch, but it can be done with the one inch. Um, it can also be done with your, getting short corded here, with your wand. Um, this is the gold pro one inch wand. It can be done with that as well. So once these are all, cool then you can start to go through and manipulate those pulling down and curling out you can also make it a little bit more lazy if you like get this out of the way here and start to comb through here okay if you need to polish up those ends I'm gonna grab my three-in-one, have you guys seen this? 
It's a curling iron, a wand, flip it over. And now it's your smoothing iron as well. This thing is magic. This definitely needs to be in your toolbox for your um, on-site weddings or weddings in general. So if you need to polish up those ends, you'll just switch over, get grab your three-in-one, and all I do is just start to turn that underneath and grab that end, smooth it out. You guys like it? It's so pretty. This is one of my favorite things to do. This is stuff that we're seeing all over and it's a little bit harder to create this look by doing a curl and combing it a bunch of times. So this is super simple, super easy. Your clients are going to love it. You can really put, uh, put a bunch of volume in it and really make it large. Oh my God, need the three in one. Yes, you do. Or you can make it softer, let those tendrils hang, start to loosen it out and move around. So the next look I want to show you is going to be with my three in one. This is my favorite, you guys. Oh my goodness. When it came out, I was awestruck. It was love at first sight. Turn here, here. So this is our three in one, all right? The barrel size is an inch and a quarter. We have our little button on the back. So we have a curl, flip it over, push that down, and it becomes a smoothing iron. So this is wonderful for a multitude of reasons. So I love this for myself. I have shorter hair. I like to wear it a little bit looser on the end so I can come in with my curling iron side, give it a nice little curl, pull it, I like to add a little tension and then I can come through and smooth those ends. I'm kind of at that like awkward length where my hair likes to flip up. Um, if you guys have ever seen me before, I used to have really short hair, so I'm growing. So I'm at that awkward length where my hair just likes to flip up and sometimes when I curl it, it does crazy things like this piece here. So this tool is ideal for me because I can curl and I can come through and um, smooth it out in one, like, one tool. It's awesome. I also, used to travel a lot hopefully we'll be able to do that soon so this tool is great for me to be able to throw in my suitcase and it's a great tool to have with you when you're doing wedding parties um i don't know about you but sometimes you go to an on-site wedding and there is just not a lot of space and not a lot of outlets so this is a great tool to be able to use to create some bend in the hair or smoothness if you need to getting those pieces up front to cooperate this is going to be your go-to tool um it is brand new we've just we just had her she's amazing so with this i'm going to show you another wave it's not as dramatic as this wave here but it's definitely something that um you can be using on your clients to help retool this tool and for them to be able to use at home. This is Bioionic. Gina asked who made this. This is Bioionic. All the tools I'm using today are all Bioionic. So um, if you if you see someone ask that question and I don't see it, if y'all can help me out and share that with them, that would be super great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my strand. I'm gonna use a little bit skinnier of a strand, okay? I don't wanna take it as big as my last strand. Uh, when I was doing those waves. Get this guy out of the way. So, oops. Okay, so I'm gonna take my three and one. I'm gonna start on the curl side. I'm gonna open up my clamp. Gets a little bit more cord here. Open up my clamp, and I'm just gonna take and feed this through. I'm pointing the bottom, the toe, down to about, I would say like seven o'clock. Okay, let that heat up. I'm gonna drop that off, I'm gonna give it a tug, and then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna smooth those ends, okay? Her hair is just so long, okay? So I let that hang out, smooth those ends, I'm gonna let this cool here, okay? So this tool is great because um, when you use it behind the chair, your clients are gonna be awestruck and they're definitely gonna want this. They're definitely going to be able to use this at home. They're gonna be able to see themselves using this tool. Um, retailing tools is scary, right? It doesn't have to be. Uh, you just have to educate and show why you're doing it, what you're using and what it's for and the benefits about it. So I'm gonna come in, we're opening, toe is pointed to about seven o'clock and we're just wrapping it around, okay? Hold on to those ends. We're gonna heat that up, drop it out. 
and switch over to that straight um, smoothing side and just smooth those ends. What temperature am I using? So I'm using 350 right now because it's mannequin hair. It's not as easily manipulated as someone like me. So I have a really skinny hair texture, really fine hair. When it's wet, it goes away. I have no hair. So for me, I would dump, I would uh, lower that down. Um, I would probably use about 320 on my own hair. 350 is average texture, average density. Um, are you wrapping? Um, average density. So I 350. I never ever ever go above 370 on anybody. Even the curliest of hair, I still stay um, under 370. Um, what temperature? Okay, are you wrapping it around? And and hair is flat. Um, Stacey, I don't really understand, but I'm, I think I get it. Um, so when I wrap it around, I'm using the curl side first. So it's locked into that curl. If this is not what you're asking, um, let me know. But the curl side first, okay? So I wrap it around that curl side first like a wand. You can also wrap it right around that clamp as well. Um, and then I'm switching it over, opening it up to that smooth side, and getting those ends. We have nice straight ends. Once that... Um, is nice and cool. I'm going to take my comb and just brush it out. So this gives you a really nice, um, lazier wave. Very romantic, very beautiful. What I'm using to comb it out is the wet brush uh, uh, detangling comb. I love this for formal styling to comb out my brush out my curls. I also love it for toning. Um, I know we're not talking about color today, but it's a great to comb through. When you're wrapping around the hair, is the hair laying flat? Yes. Okay. So I understand, Stacey. Okay. So the last technique that I showed, I twisted the hair. Okay. So I took that section, I twisted it counterclockwise, and each time I twisted it, it added um, around the barrel, it added a twist. This is going to be a flat wrap. Okay. So you're going to take your sections. I'll show you again. Take your sectioning and. you will keep it flat. So instead of twisting, we're holding it nice and tight. That elevation is low. I'm pointing my toe down. You can also use this as a wand here if you don't want to open it up. And it's just laying flat nice again. So does that help show you? Okay, good. I'm glad I got that for you. So then you're going to hold it, keeping those ends out. Drop it down. Give it a little pull. Switch it over. And then you are going to smooth those ends. If you need to on those ends too, you can actually manipulate them to move into a wave just by using, let's see if I can get the bottoms here. Oh, there we go. So if you need to, if this little guy, see how this one's kind of shooting out, get it all back in control. Um, trying to get this so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So you'll um, grab that iron, we'll close it, and then we're just gonna feed it through in a C shape, so it helps to move those ends. You'll feed it through, making a C with that hair to help smooth it out. So that section, holding it low, wrapping around. This is our three-in-one, Bioionic three-in-one. I have the temperature setting at 350 because she's a mannequin. If you're doing on someone like me with a skinnier hair texture, you're going to want to bump that down even lower. Our tools are wonderfully made. They have a mineral complex inside of all of them that are going to help to soften, seal, and shine, allowing moisture to stay inside the hair. So you're going to get a really beautiful, um, smooth, shiny result with using our tools. This is our three-in-one. I tell everyone, when you go and get this for yourself, pick one up to retail because your clients are going to adore this tool. It is simple. It's easy. Right on the back, there's that button to switch to that curl or smooth. Once this is all nice and cool, because remember we talked about earlier, we want our, our hair to set. This guy's not quite ready. I'm just going to come through and comb it out. So we have a nice, soft, romantic wave. So we have our bigger waves. The endulums are a little bit more prominent through here. And then we have our softer waves. Um, two different tools, technically three. You can do this back section with um, the million dollar wave that I showed first. You can do that with the Gold Pro. Um, you can also, uh, this section here, I like to do with my three in one, but you can use any of your tools for that as well. I just find it a little bit more handier because I can switch over to that smooth side. Um, these can all be purchased at Salon Centric, Rob. Love Bionic Tools. Me too, Kathy. 
Is that a flat curl iron? Yes, yeah, so this is a three in one. So we have our wand, we have our curling iron, flip it around here, switch it down, and we have our smoothing iron. This is our bioionic uh, three in one. Has a mineral complex in it like all of our tools, meaning that it's going to soften, seal, and shine on no matter what you're using, whether it be this any of the tools I'm showcasing today or um, our blow dryers, flat irons, all of that. They all have this mineral complex. The great thing about every single tool that I'm showing you today too is they all have an hour shut off time. So if you're like me and can't even barely remember to shut the lights off, let alone my flat iron or curling iron, they have an hour shut off. All right, so I'll show you this one more time and then we're gonna move on to the other side. So our three in one for those of you just joined, I'm gonna start with it as a wand or you can use a curl as a curl as well and we're gonna wrap around. Is there gonna be a nice, loose, softer wave? Um, oops, just realized you can't even see, my girl. You wanna point that toe down to about seven o'clock on these. Okay, we want long, long curls. And we're gonna drop this out. I'm gonna switch it over to that flat iron side and pull it. These are bioionic tools. It really does so much better. Yeah, you know what, we love it. It's I love these tools. You can tell right away, even on my mannequin hair. Rob asked what products I use to prep the hair. So I used Weed Up products today. Um, I blow dried her, and the only thing that I put in here was the Magunga oil. That is it, that's all she has in her hair. Um, the Magunga oil is wonderful. It is very moisturizing, so it's gonna help to battle frizz. It has a ton of shine, it's very lightweight. So this is what I put in her hair wet, just a tiny little bit. And then as I'm working, if I feel like I need it when I get to the, I'm gonna tie her up um, into an updo. So once I start with that updo, I might spray a little bit of this, a little bit of this on my hands to work through if she's getting extra frizzy. Or you can also do the Wee Dad's Revive and Shine. This um, is a shine spray that instantly absorbs into the hair. So it doesn't weigh the hair down. It adds a ton of shine and helps smooth, and it helps to block humidity, which I don't know where y'all are from, but I'm in the Midwest and it is humid. Um, and this is all, I need this for everyday life. Um, every time I curl, I feel like I have frizz on top. Bailey, that is, a, that happens a lot. So my philosophy on this is the less, less is more with product wise. So the reason why I choose these, this product to, um, start with is because it's very lightweight, very moisturizing. Uh, frizzy hair lacks moisture. So I want to be able to set myself up for success. So this was it. I took my blow dryer and everything was nice and sleek and smoothing down, smoothing down that cuticle. I don't like to use a hairspray until I'm finished with my section. Sometimes um, I used to do this and I found that it doesn't work well for me. If it works well for you, that's great, but um, it doesn't really work well for me to use hairsprays and work through that curl. So I sometimes I see you have your hairspray and you spray your section and then you add your curl. In theory, this is great, but what it does is it locks everything down and then it starts to frizz up before we're ready to lock in that um, that movement, unless it's a flexible or a working spray. Um, south, humid, yes. Lots of humidity issues. Yeah, you guys, check out these products by Wee Dad. Um, these are their stylist series, and they are fabulous. Um, these are my go-to for formal styling. I have my um, clean sweep in case she didn't come with clean hair. Humidity. Humidity, humidity. <laughs> so all of those block out that humidity. Um, and for the flat iron or curling iron, oh, well, yeah, Diane, we'll get to that. Um, you can check out the, on the website, Salon Centric, um, and it should show you all of those too. Everything is on promo this month. Okay, so we have our waves, our heavier waves, our softer waves. Yeah, one more, and then we're gonna do a little updo. So the next tool that I'm going to use, move this curly curly out of the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you two, um, the same technique with two different tools. So our long barrel and our Marcel. Um, so I know we have some OGs like me that grew up on a Marcel and we have some babies that have probably never used a Marcel. So I'm gonna show you this technique with both ways. Um, I don't prefer one or the other, I like them both. They both yield the same result. So you're gonna take your section and I like to take these a moderate size, okay? Again, we're working with low elevation. Right now, what we're seeing is a lot of 
low romantic, not a whole lot of volume. There's a time and a place and that's absolutely great. If you wanted to create more volume, we're gonna create more elevation. Okay, so you're gonna take your long barrel. I love this long uh, long barrel, bioatic long barrel, because it has extra space, extra working space on that barrel. You guys see the difference here? Whoops. So there's two extra inches of room of workable space. This doesn't have to be just for long hair girls, although it is great for our long gals. Extensions are killing it right now, so these are great for that, but it's also really great for our clients at home that may have shorter hair too. Um, because you can see the other side. So it has the plastic grippy so you don't burn yourself, but you can see on the other side when you're working. So even with short hair, this is great as well. Yes, you do need the long barrel. I will, Rob, you know what? I'll go back um, after this and I will comment with the products that I use too. So you guys can say, I'm using We Dodds products. Um, the Revive and Shine is my go-to as well as the Magunga oil. And I will post those when I get done because um, so I'll probably have more questions about that. So don't worry. I will get you guys. I will tag you if I can find it, if I can find you. So I'm going to take a bigger, little bit bigger of a section with my long barrel. I'm going to slide that in. Now, when I start curling around the face, I always take in mind um, in consideration where I want that curl to start around her face. So a good tip is to take your fingers and rock it down. Now, she's got a pretty, I mean, she's got a pretty symmetrical face, but you don't ever want your curls to hit at the, um, at the widest part of your face. We want to take that into consideration. So for her, since we don't have any issues, we're just going to um, lower that down to about cheekbone, and that's where I'm going to start my curl. Okay, so I place it in, give it a twist, and then I'm gonna twist this off. Now you guys have probably seen this. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite techniques to do. This is gonna give you more of a looser boho style and let that completely cool. It is very simple to do, very easy. This is probably a little bit smaller of a section that I would like to take, but I'm gonna do it anyway because it's gonna bother me if it's straight. So I'll switch directions for you. So take a little bit, and wrap, scoot it down, twist it up, twist it around, and wrap down, twist it up, and around, and back down, okay? So those are gonna create more of that beachy wave. My favorite thing about this iron is just the ability to have more space to work with without having to squeeze that hair up. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So this is our Bioionics Long Barrel with two extra inches of workable space on that iron. It is amazing. Also has that one hour shut off time for you guys. It's very important for me to have that. I don't know about y'all, I'm so forgetful. So once these are cool, you can comb through that. I'm using the wet brush and you get more of that lazy beachy wave through here. I'll show you the bio, the long barrel as well one more time. So when I do curl sets, um, I like to take really big sections. Is there a difference in the curl if you point the iron up or down? That's great, I'll show you that right here. So I'm going to point the iron down, okay? And wrap it around. Your curl is moving back behind. We're on the same side of the head. This applies the same side of the head. So we'll feed it through. I'm gonna leave those ends out and drop it down. Now, if I point that iron, the toe up, we are switching curl directions. That is a great question, Stacey. I'm so glad you asked that. So when you're on the same side of the head using the same hand, okay? Don't be switching it up on me, okay? We have these two curls here. So this front one, I pointed my toe down. And what I mean by the toe is this piece right here, the bottom, okay? On the same side, if I just move and point that toe up, it switches that curl direction. So it's really an easy way to keep yourself on track. Now, if you're anything like me, um, I'm kind of scatterbrained sometimes when I'm doing just a curl set and sometimes I forget um, where I'm at, that's okay. If you don't do every other every other time, it's going to be okay. It's not gonna be the end of the world. Just switch it and then move on. Just It's, it's great. So down, you're gonna be moving away from the face. If you're on the left side, I'm on the left side. And if you point up, you're gonna be moving towards. So it changes the curl direction. It's an easy way to change that curl direction without thinking about it. Same thing on this side. If we point it down, 
I gotta move my mannequin, sorry. I'm trying to be crafty and that's not how that works. <laughs> Okay, so if we, so this side, when we pointed it down, the curls moved away. We're on the other side now, so I'm going to point it up. Those curls move away. We're moving back towards the wall here. And if we point that toe down, get a different position here. If we point that toe down, we're going to be moving that curl direction, moving forward. You are very welcome. If you guys have more questions, um, post them. If I don't see them, post them again so I can see them so I don't have to scroll through. Formal styling is going to be, oh man, it's going to be 2021. That's all we're going to be doing. We have weddings that got postponed. We got um, life events that got postponed. If you are not doing formal styling right now, that's okay because you guys, we have a full year to practice. I am gonna tell you a story about myself. I used to never do formal styling. Your girl would rock out some curls and I might pull up a side and pin it. And I was that person in the salon that if you had a um, wedding party, I would oblige, but I would politely ask that you give me the half up, half downs. And if that's you, that's okay. The beauty of our industry is there are a ton of these people running around, our little mannequin heads, and they don't care what you do to them. So practice, practice, practice. When I look at an updo picture, it can, I always recommend looking at it like you would a haircut or a hair color so it's not so overwhelming to you. We gotta practice, we gotta get those mannequins out. We have a full year before weddings are gonna be happen again, a little less than a year. But that's a long time to practice. Um, yeah, so Stacey, uh, Susan, sorry, it's hard to read my small little writing over here. Susan says sometimes she likes doing different curls, like I'm doing a different variation of patterns and techniques to create, um, with thicker hair to create more movement and more dimension. I love that idea. Um, and all, if you're doing this, to go off what you said, Susan, if you're doing this and you do the whole head in one same um, technique, awesome. That's great. That's obviously what most of us do. But if you have one straight hair, we always forget that one piece and you just put some bend to it. They're not going to notice. It's not going to ruin the end game. So don't feel like if you forget that one piece, you can't just wrap it around like a wand. It's all going to blend in the end. Plus she didn't be dancing. So you won't even see that, right? Okay, so now I'm going to show you a very quick updo. we got about 20-ish minutes left. Um, I talk a lot, so if I didn't answer your questions, please let me know. We are still going to be staying with the Bioionic tools, and we're going to do a very, 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 very easy updo. I love updos. No one likes to do them at work. I was used to be that person that didn't like to do them, and now I'm like, give me all the updos. It is a great source of revenue for you. If you can practice and put some really quick tips and tricks in your back pocket, you can whip an updo out in about 30 minutes. I usually book out 30 minutes per updo. I could probably do it in 20, but sometimes I feel like I'm too fast and I like missed something, so I'll do 30. When I do my brides, I always book out an hour because I want undivided attention and she's always doing something else. She's always running around, she's got a gift to open, she's gotta go answer her phone, so I always provide an hour, even sometimes an hour and a half, depending on if we have extensions in there and all that good stuff. So this updo is very, very simple. I have some hair that I have not curled yet, and all I wanna do is simply put some bend into it. So I'm gonna grab our gold, um, the biggest size that we have, inch and a half iron, and I'm just gonna start moving some bend into it. Now this particular updo doesn't have any pieces down. It can, but the way I'm gonna do it will just have minimal, so I'm not really worried so much about curl direction as I am more softening and bending those ends. So I'm gonna take this section here. It looks like it's curled, but it's not. She was just twisted up in my clip. And I'm just gonna start adding bend to it. I'm gonna keep my elevation low, not very much um, volume in this updo. You can absolutely put volume into it. Um, this is just going to be your template. You can make it how you need it and want it. Simple and easy. This is gonna take you seven seconds, I promise. Like a 10 minute updo and it's so pretty, and it's great for everyone. And you can put like their fashion accessories, I know clips and barrettes and all that good stuff are in right now. So all I'm doing to prep, and I would probably, uh, because I curled her already, she has a lot of bend and movement, I'm just picking up extra pieces and adding some bend to it. 
Sonia, you've been doing updos for years and you love it. I love to hear that. Um, how I started doing updos, I guess I never finished my story, is my, um, I was at a hair show. I was in Chicago. And if you've ever been to the Chicago hair show, it's huge. And it was probably my second year doing hair shows. And I was told by my director that I was going to be showcasing an updo. And I was like, oh, you're so funny. <laughs> no, I'm not. He's like, yeah, yeah, you are. So get ready. So I did my very first updo on stage. I was terrified. It was it was terrifying. But from that moment, I've learned to appreciate the fine details. And I practice, 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 practice. If you could see my office right now, I have one, two, I have three mannequins just hanging out and I have a whole basket, my closet's behind here, of mannequin heads that I just practice and play. When you see me in doing store demos, I'm doing a lot of practicing and playing there too. So get those mannequins out, okay? So we have, she's mostly curled. So all I did to prep her, aside from the curls, is take my Gold Pro, the biggest size, and just add some bend. So I am going to leave her part in the front. She likes that business. We're gonna keep that front, that part. And I am going to take her hair. About, she's got a lot of hair, so I'm gonna take her right above her ear is where I'm gonna part, a horizontal parting all the way across, okay? So right above her ear, horizontal parting. Now, when I do updos, I stand right in front of the mirror. My mirror's right here. So obviously I'm on the wrong side. You want to use that mirror for your advantage. You wanna make sure that your partings are clean and that you are not moving that updo to the left or to the right. You don't wanna do that, okay? We've done it and then we're like, oh shoot. <laughs> Homegirl's gonna, um, we're gonna tag Homegirl into getting an updo to the side. Done that before. Okay, so this can be done to the side if she wants one off to the side. So right above the ear, I'm gonna leave that guy down. She's got fuzzy in her hair. Okay, I'm just gonna polish her back. Now, you can use, one of my favorite tools to use is the Wet Brush Epic Professional. Um, teasing comb, you can use that to create a more softer pony. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna rouge it up anyway, okay? If you would like to add some back combing here, do it, okay? So I'm gonna take my elastic. Got two here, let me get one. Okay, we're gonna push it down. We're gonna leave ourselves some space. Now, for any of you that are my age and older, you're gonna have a flashback to our childhood here is we're gonna twist this ponytail through, okay? So we have our ponytail, it's nice and low. We're gonna peep her open, grab those pinchers, get out of there. And loop it down, that's step one, okay? Now, you can keep it like this if you want it a little bit tighter, or just start to pull this out. Don't do too much though, because we got some more work to do and we wanna be able to make sure that we're nice and tight. If you need, just take that rubber band pony and twist up. Now we have all this hair to contend with. We're gonna take, if you need, go back to that iron and start to polish this up. If it's not quite moving in that direction, we're just gonna polish it up here, okay? Hey, Jillian! Sorry, she gets a real special shout out. So I'm gonna take my pinchers up through and I'm gonna pull this piece through. Pull it up and I'm gonna secure it with a bobby pin. Wherever you, wherever your finger is underneath, you're gonna put that bobby pin in. If you put that bobby pin in and you take your finger out and you can see it, I want you to take it out right away and redo it, okay? You're gonna save yourself a big headache in the very end if you just take care of those visible bobby pins. The worst thing in the whole world is when you are letting your updo walk away and you're like, oh, there's that bobby pin. Another thing that I like to set my guests up with is um, the rule of thumb that if it hurts your head when I put it in, you have that moment to tell me it hurts your head. If I move away from that pin, I will not go fishing for that pin, girl. Okay, so then you're gonna work through the other side. It's up to you on where you wanna put these through, but we're gonna keep fishing those through this little loop right here. Okay, so we still have this. So we're gonna pull up. I'm gonna take about half of this. Just 
smooth that in, you guys see? And we're gonna pull, I like that, so I'm gonna pull this through my little loop skis. Okay, and I'm gonna let that hang out there. If you want, you can start to secure it, but I got other hair to pull back, so I wanna keep myself um, with a little bit of room here. So now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna place this in there, poke it through, pull it down, and at this point, I am gonna start securing because it's starting to kind of loop down on me and starting to sag. So we will grab wherever your thumb is. You're gonna sneak that bobby pin in there and I like to cross it, I like to make X's, okay? So when you're putting that bobby pin in, we have one going this way. We're gonna take the other one if you can and cross it. And please, please, please keep those bobby pins out of your mouth. We gotta break that habit. We got some things going on in the world. We don't need things in our mouth. And I'm gonna take this guy and pop this up. I need to move over here. I'm gonna turn her so I can see in my mirror. Okay, this guy is sagging on me, so I'm gonna pull this up. Loop that in and secure. And I'm using mostly pins here. The difference between a hairpin and a bobby pin is huge. Your hairpin is going to hold things in place. So this is your hairpin. So if you need to just hold this in place while you're working, you got something else to place in there, you're gonna pop that up and you're just gonna line that up to where you need it to be held at, okay? If you are ready to secure, you're gonna grab those pins and you're gonna secure it. So now we're gonna come around and we're gonna add to this other side here. So I want these pieces to move in. So we are going to get that guy out of the way first and foremost. And start, whoops, pulling these pieces up and in. Now, get that hairpin out of the way because we don't need that there. If she's starting to get a little bit fly away and frizzy, this is when I would grab my Mugunga, my Mugunga oil and just spray it right on her hands, rub it in, and start to smooth that out, okay? So we're just gonna keep feeding and keep moving that through. Now she's got a lot of hair, so we got a lot of feeding to do, but that's okay. We'll get there. You can also braid this bottom piece here and braid it up and then start to twist it in. So I'm using my hairpins to start guiding that in place. Just pushing everything up and holding it there because I want to lay this out before I secure it. And I really like the shape that this is taking here, so I'm going to start to secure that. Easy, easy, easy. If she starts to sag in the middle, we're going to pull that up from the inside. This is the piece that I did not secure earlier, so that's why she's sagging a little bit. So I don't have anything else secured, so I'm going to come in and start to add that movement. So with this, my favorite thing is that you can literally make it into whatever you want. So we started with that pony, then we fed that, flipped that pony through, um, flipped that pony through and then started flipping smaller pieces through that pony. Very 1990-esque, so if you are my age, <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we just wore our hair like that with one flip. And I'm gonna start to securing. Start to secure it. Um, somebody asked where I got my mannequin head from. I don't know. I got it from a company. I will try and find that out for you. Um, Ashley Erickson, if you're still on there, and no. <laughs> um, it is, oh goodness, she doesn't even have a name. Oh wait, okay, I'll look. Um, and see if I can figure out the name or the brand of this mannequin. Cause she's a real good one. I got another one. Um, and I didn't, it, and I've seen a lot of artists use it, but it didn't quite, the ends got really weird when I got it wet. So this one is great. I highly recommend this one, but I don't know. I know Salon Centric has really great ones too. So this one, yeah, you, I order from Salon Centric quite often. I'm just gonna go through, do some fine detailing here. 
Got to secure those bad boys. Now, I usually don't do any hairspray until I'm completely finished because I don't want to work through sticky. Does that make sense? I'm just securing. Wherever I see that I need to secure, I'm just going to pop it in. Okay? Now, you want to make sure that as you're working, if you see that bobby pin, you don't walk away from it. So I can see that, so I'm not quite done. Just gonna fish that in and work on covering that little guy right there. I still don't like him. So we're gonna come fish from the back. Take that out. So when you're done with those um, hairpins, you can either take them out or just push them in and drop them down. This last little section here. So to recap for you guys, all of the tools I use today are Bionic tools, sold at Salon Centric, and they're all on specials this month. Okay, so I'm gonna use my hairspray. Um, this is going. This is the um, curl last. Now, even though it says it's you know curls, you don't have to use it just for curls. I like it because it's more of that working spray. It gives a whole bit. It's also flexible to work with. I don't normally use hairspray when I do updos. If you have a working spray that you enjoy using and it doesn't get too sticky, great. Go work through. Boop. All right, friends. I had so much fun today. I will show you real quick what I used um, to complete. I know that if you guys jumped on and just saw the updo, I did a lot of waves too. So my tool collection that I used, we have the three-in-one Bioionic Styler, curling iron, smoothing iron, and a wand. It's about an inch and a half. Um, it's not about, it's an inch and a quarter, sorry. Then we have the long barrel, two extra inches of workable space, our style winders, there's four sizes in the style winders. This is just our smallest one. This is a three quarters. And then um, I also used our gold pro collection as well. All available at Salon Centric. They are all on special this, um, this month. I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I will try to go through and comment anything that I may have missed. You can also hop over to my social media page and shoot me a direct message. I am B E. B E Jean J E A N like your jeans hair B Jean hair on Instagram, um, and then I'm pretty sure that I they might have reposted a story that I posted salon centric on the actual story page. I would love to connect with you guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you have any questions, let me know. And until next time, take care, be well, and be safe.